If you are the mom, the aunt, the cousin, the grandma, the sister, the friend of a black male who is of voting age, I desperately need you to watch this video. If you're not, you can keep scrolling. But if you are, I need you to watch this video and I need your advice. I am a mother of a 24 year old, handsome black male who lives down the South. Um, I live up North, but he grew up in a very, you can call it liberal household. My household has always, including my husband, he grew up with a man in the household, a male role model. Both of us are educated. We've always um, advocated and been activists for the rights of marginalized and oppressed people to include people of black, brown, Muslim, Asian, people with disabilities, LBGTQIA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've talked about rights as we have a nonprofit. We, we do lots of things in the community that supports the politics and the policies of Vice President Kamala Harris. I even remember the day that Barack Obama won the election in 2008 and my son was eight years old. And the very next day he got up and put on a suit and tie. He wanted to wear that to school because he saw himself in that moment that he could be the president of the United States. However, in the past several months, he has been giving me strong indications, although he has not said it out loud, that he wants to vote for a, pres for a former president, Donald Trump in this election. We are constantly talking him off of that ledge. We are constantly defending Vice President Kamala Harris and reinforcing the what we experienced under the oppressive conditions, the police brutality, et cetera, et cetera, that we experienced under the presidency of Donald Trump. We have to continue to reinforce Project 2025 and what that's gonna mean for him as a black man in the future. But for some reason, about once a week, we had to talk him off that ledge. I'm not sure what's going on with our young black man. He grew up in a very privileged household. He has had all of his needs met and maybe because he hasn't had to go a day without health care, he hasn't had to go a day without food and his basic necessities. If his human rights or his educational rights or whatever rights that he is entitled to has ever been breached, we have always been there to advocate for him. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe that privileged life that he has experienced of a, a young black man has somehow aligned with Donald Trump's privilege. And somehow he sees himself more in him than he does Vice President Kamala Harris. But more importantly, not more importantly, but what really keeps me up at night is that as a black woman, I have always made it a priority to show him the strength of a black woman. I started out as a single mother with him. Um, I went to law school with him. His first day of kindergarten was my first day of law school. So he witnessed me struggle through law school. He witnessed me even after I graduated, start making salaries, the struggle and my rise and my fight through many things throughout my life. And to not see that same strength and determination in another black woman, it has me down. It has me disappointed. It has me wondering, where did I go wrong? Where did my household go wrong? Why am I having to have these conversations? These are just not conversations that I ever pictured having with any child of mine with anyone, honestly, that shares my bloodline of people, the whole family has advocated for civil rights. I come from Montgomery, Alabama. My whole family was involved in some sort of civil rights movement throughout history. So if you are, again, a black mom, sister, cousin, aunt, whatever, friend, grandma, 
and you're having to have these same conversations, just let me know. Let me know I'm not alone. Let me know what you're doing, how you're having these conversations, how they're going for you. I need some support, y'all. I do. I need some support. But So I just want to start off by saying that she is a horrible mother. She's a horrible mother in the sense that she's pretty much telling the world that she doesn't respect her son's right to vote. She doesn't respect her son's decision to choose. All of this could have been avoided if she just said, you know what, son? You're 24 years old. You're an adult now. You have the right to vote. You have the right to pick whichever candidate you think best fits the lifestyle that you think they can give you because they really can't give you a lifestyle. But... All I have to do was respect that. And that's it. That's all she needed to say. All this other nonsense she's talking about with the civil rights movement, all these marginalized groups, has nothing to do with the president. Police brutality has nothing to do with the president. It really doesn't. And I think a lot of people put too much importance on the president of the United States. They can't do anywhere near the things they can do that you think they can. Your local government has a bigger say in what happens to you than the president. But the one who has the biggest say is you. Where you live, when the job you choose to do, and the type of and the uh the type of lifestyle you choose to live are all up to you. The president cannot change any of that. And there's a lot of y'all that are out here waiting around for the president to forgive your student loans. It's never gonna happen. It hasn't happened since they introduced that bill. It hasn't happened. So y'all sitting around here thinking that the, the president's going to change your life. It's just not going to happen. And the president doesn't have anywhere near as much power as y'all think it is. But what I find so crazy is that people will outcast you based on your political beliefs. Right. Yet they'll sit at a Thanksgiving table with the person that owes the money, the person that has touched one of their children, the person that has had an affair with their wives or their husbands, the person that has stolen from you. They will look them dead in the face at Thanksgiving table. But if you don't believe if you don't go along with their political beliefs and go with the candidate that they want to vote for you're outcasted from the family and this happens a lot more than it should I feel way too much and I'm just going to give y'all my two cents I really don't give a damn about who, who becomes president because my life isn't going to change one bit the only thing that's going to change my life drastically is if I change my life not if the government can change my life and if you want to vote for Donald Trump it's fine if you want to vote for Kamala Harris, that's fine. But we need to stop acting like we're going to go to hell depending on who the president is. It's really ridiculous. And I think a lot of y'all need to go actually look up what the president can and can't do. Because in all honesty, the president can't do anything without Senate approval. He really can't. Matter of fact, the Senate can veto a president's veto. So the president doesn't have as much power anywhere near as what y'all think he does.